What's up, all of you sassy people? It is January 13th, 2022, and this is episode season two, episode, episode 31. Season. That's a good one. Season two, episode 31, and uh, we're here with the, uh, the usual suspects. So, uh, you know, Brian, Bruno, the amazing Kelly. I mean, oh, I'll take I mean, I'll take the blame for that because I did not update the show notes with the episode number. So, or the season. Yeah. Excuse me. The episode today number. is today is season template, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, man, it is now fixed. Kind of. Yeah, it's all good. It's fine. It'll be fine. That's It'll be fault. just fine. Ah, oh, good gravy. Is it though? I mean, is it actually, I, good. I, I actually hate the number of times that we say it's been a week because it's getting uh, fucking old. Uh, like I you guys say, thinking, Ted, is it getting old or is it getting old? Yeah. Well, like, I mean, like even even the other thing that I say that's getting old is 2020 is the longest year on record. <laughs> uh, oh, hello, Parker. And no, goodbye, so Parker. Oh, and year. good, good. He he kept his tail in a PG manner as he walked away from the yeah. camera. That was amazing. Although luckily the sass fish holes. cuts it off. I don't think cat buttholes are technically against TOS. No, they're not. They're not. They're not. They're just gross. Uh, I, I, I wow. do love I do love the you just made up a new channel. Right? Cat buttholes. <laughs> I we could totally wait. I'm making up a third another channel now. I do love how the almost universal cartoonist like concept of a butthole just being an X. Like this, every time you see a cartoonist yes, with a cat walking away, true. it's just a little that's X. This. Yeah. When you said I have a new thing to make too, I instantly thought like, cause the, the hot thing on Twitter or Twitch is like licking something. And I was like, <laughs> uh, Oh God, stop. stop. Oh God! No. That's, that's definitely that's definitely uh, against terms of service, Mike. Man, that was wow. Great. That's like the that, second uh, time we've triggered Kelly today, and uh, only the first time on the podcast. But God, uh, yeah, I triggered her seriously. earlier. You're welcome. There's a couple of YouTubers out there that have gone down for conspiracies like that, or at least for being caught. So you know, we, there's yeah, there's a market. Well, like, needing a break in their manufacturing a ban. Yeah, you were talking about that one day, and I was like. Fortunately, yeah. we don't suffer from that. I mean, like, yeah, we're trying to broadcast as many times as we can. Feel free we're trying to, to get as many fans as we of... can. And, and we've got uh, eight or nine, you know, uh, eight or nine amazingly You're awesome people that need to, like, bring Absolutely. in other people for us as well. <laughs> Please. So thanks for being here. Holy Christmas. What the heck happened? I think we got the invasion of the bots going on. I think possibly that's probably what's happened. Because I don't think anyone's thing. rating us. I don't know why we oh, have so many people. If, <laughs> uh, like, seriously, if if those are actual viewers, thank you for dropping by. It's amazing. We actually will eventually talk about games here. What is really weird is that it says we only have five viewers, but yet there's like 20 bots or 20 people. <laughs> Sweet. Well, some of cool. them actually look legit. So, I mean, hey, oh, we thanks for stopping right by. Now. <laughs> uh, this has got our attention. This is what has got our attention in the last week or so in the world, mostly gaming related. But before we do that, Zycia, what do we got coming up first? Well, uh, as typical, oh my God, uh, he's like queued up like usual. Uh, we're going to start off with Kelly's Corner. I mean, why throw it to me if like you could just introduce her? Like, I don't know why. Because you you're the host. <laughs> exactly. So I was going to do the host thing and like introduce it. <laughs> oh, God. Whatever. What do you got for us today, Kelly? All right. So the, the first article um, was sent uh, to me by one of my very good friends um, who is also a cat lover. I would like to say and, that I also independently found this. Well, so... I was going to, I was going gonna to say, yeah, it. but that person is actually two people because one of them was my friend Amita. The other was Brian. And, um, I did not originally see until earlier today that he also sent the article. Um, 
Get out of my so, head. I, again, we are sharing a brain, so I need this space for other I'll things. Stranger. Brian. That or you that or you consider him your friend. Either one of those <laughs> is kind of weird. Right. But anyway, let, yes. let's jump into it. Yeah. So um do you guys know about the SpaceX Starlink satellite servers and the satellite dishes? Um yep. Easy Which, way for pe- will become an easy way for people in rural areas to get uh, internet. Yes, or just be able to stream anything. I have a friend so, that uses Starlink right now. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. and they're a little sure. bit further north from us, so they're certainly going to suffer some problems with this uh, supposed storm that's coming in. Mm-hmm. Unless, unless their uh, Starlink server, Starlink uh, dish, actually has the no melt mode um in which case it will as described it's like a heated seat snow. for a satellite <laughs> well it's, yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's like the satellite it's like dish that. heats itself up to melt the snow to mm-hmm. keep your reception clean yeah which unless seems you can to work destroy well. alderaan yeah unless, yes. unless you have cats in your neighborhood in which case they might use it as a fucking bed <laughs> and uh, which one um Twitter user, that, like so <laughs> negatively. <laughs> like, I love this photo. It's not just one. It's like, yeah, it's, it's like five, five, it's five, it's five, five cats. cats. Oh my god! Yeah. Um, so, so, so like, you heard it fear first. Five <laughs> cats. That's right. Five cats yeah. at least can fit on a Starlink satellite dish. Yeah, I see enough true. room for at least two more. At, yeah. le- I'm at least, oh, at least two sure, more. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, so, uh, was it Starlink user Aaron Taylor? Aaron Taylor, um, Aaron Taylor posted this on Twitter. Um, and he says, you know, oh, you know, they, they go on and they're like, oh, you know, well, it is a warm, cozy space. It's cold out. And, um, this Gizmodo article says, well, there's another possible explanation. Cats are just assholes. <laughs> and they go on to say, oh, well, I mean, they left this cozy house with, heating and blankets and all sorts of stuff well, to tromps around in the snow and then find this lovely satellite dish. <laughs> I mean, we don't know how many of these cats are feral and how many actually live in the house. Those, uh, those don't look like feral cats. I've, yeah, they I've look actually like the guy who took the picture's cats. cats that he yeah. made to go feral on there. Feral cats, the their, their fur is actually much more, it almost, it's, it's grayer because it looks like mice, which they eat and stuff. So, no, those are those are very well fed, happy. It's true. Cats. Yeah. yeah. Well, Almost I mean, like they're the certainly the happy. I mean, like, they hey, have found. <laughs> here's some catnip on top of the Starlink so we can make a make an article here. Yeah, make yeah. a meme out of it. Uh, trust me, no catnip was needed. I mean, if cats no. like find mm. a warm spot to sit, they are happy individuals. Uh, clearly. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, Aaron Taylor did say that, um, you know, when he took the picture, they that uh, they did succeed in slowing down his service and performance, but um, it didn't completely cut off the service. So, well, I mean, clearly, because there's at least uh, 20 square centimeters of, st- of dish there available. Yeah. To accept Why is it on the floor? Oh, OK. So that uh, that explanation is. He's actually building a house and he's going to be putting the Starlink server on the house. So he said that this will not be an uh, an issue eventually, but okay. it's uh, that's why it's, it's oh, like that's a like real hold problem. On, hold on, hold on, whoa, 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 yeah. whoa. Wait a minute. Why does the resident Canadian refer to the ground as <laughs> the floor? Because <laughs> it is the floor. The, no, that's the ground. The yeah, floor is inside your house. <laughs> Well, that right. depends that what your house you from the ground. That, you're, that depends you're what your house is made out of. If the floor is made of snow, then it's made of snow. Like ice right. castles but, are a thing. All right. It's like <laughs> so my thing is, is, if you don't understand why that could be called a floor, then you haven't built a proper snow fort in your life. Is all I'm saying. <laughs> because when we used to build snow forts, those things had snow couches, snow benches. <laughs> No shelves. <laughs> they had the whole nine yards. You could, you wouldn't even imagine how much stuff you could hide inside of a snow fort. Those things were huge. We had one that could fit like ten people in it. Uh, it I would Alberta. love, love, love to have some hot cocoa and a snow fort made by Namirian. I would 
that would be a dream of mine. Actually, you haven't lived that life is until you've still a dream because I mean, we're never going to get that much snow here. You haven't I lived mean, life until you've hot boxed a snow know. fort. <laughs> Listen, oh I'm all about the snow fort. I made them went during blizzards in in Nebraska and stuff, but I still didn't call it the floor. It was the ground. So my thing is, if this Somebody is a house that's a being built, either. so the house is not this built. Is why true. does he have? Snowing? Oh no! So he's 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 got a house he's in right now he's got a place he's living on the property but yeah, and you can clearly not, see uh, he is building it because that is some lumber in the background right there. that's what i'm saying so why is starlink still on the, and if you know it, that doesn't make any sense to me this seems like a very like placed photo like uh, i don't know whatever I don't it. it's internet cats he's also funny. not the only one that has said something so yeah exactly because it's like meme central it's like oh cats and the internet we're gonna win this that's add, right. Add Tesla, Cats Elon Musk, the internet. Starlink, well, internet. Oh, dude, too. we're good. I mean, I think like we can all agree. You know, actually, if we've learned one thing here today, cats and dogs win the internet, and humans True story. make the internet True. worse. Mm-hmm. Oh, I give it. Uh, yep, I will. Well, I mean, I the cats and dogs wouldn't be on the internet without humans, so... It's true. Really? Saying, they... Like if they make it worse, they also Don't add the poke cats holes and dogs. in my logic. Damn it. I, your logic didn't get a hole poked in it. I shredded the whole thing. It's gone. <laughs> it is. <laughs> what else, Kelly? Um, okay, the other article I have um, is a, a recent article, but about a, something that happened in 2017. Um, there were two LAPD officers who were supposed to be responding to a burglary in progress along with lots of other people, um, burglary at Macy's. Um, but instead, they decided to go chase a Snorlax in Pokemon Go. <laughs> and <laughs> It's not the worst thing I've heard a cop do. So I, I told I, that, everybody we'd get to true. jams. That's true. That is true. Um, but uh, like some of these other stories we've heard about, uh, police officers, but uh, and I do need to say, um, not all cops are bad. I am related to cops, so I a lot of them do good things. We see good things that happen. I may never go to Kelly's house again. <laughs> I know, right? Hey, um, it's like anything else. If something good happens, you tell one or two people. If something yeah. bad happens, you tell a hundred people. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, the good, and, the good and cops you, you chasing Snorlax instead of burglars but, is. Uh -huh. So they initially just like ignored it, right? And then um, the subsequent call to for them to show up, they literally just said no, um, and then went through the Wait, process what? of yes, yes. Their response was no. Um, there, then they went through the process of like deciding the best way to get to the Snorlax. Um, which meant like going down a different cross street and coming back up and then they'd find it. Um, they also tried to conceal the fact that they did this when they were subsequently questioned about it. Um, well, as, they were as internal affairs is looking yeah. at the body cams going. And so why do we see a cell phone in front of your body cam with like Pokemon yeah. going <laughs> So there's a recording of them talking about this. The recording is from their police car. Um, and they, so it's, this is, this is pathetic. It, it actually is. Um, so they lied about it. Right. Um, obviously stuff's recorded. Pokemon go that all that stuff's tracked. Um, they were charged with multiple counts of on duty misconduct. Like I said, fired. They appealed, and in their appeal, they were like, "Well, we we weren't aware that we were being recorded." <laughs> Are you kidding oh. me? Yeah. Oh, well, then we should throw oh. this out. This yeah. Is, uh, so oh, it depends on what state gonna, you're yeah. in. Is that, is that what this is? I didn't oh my know gosh, this that was. What, what's, what's, oh. what's this body cam doing here? I thought that was Iron Man. Oh, I thought that was like my little power thing. Like this is what? nuts. Uh, so I think. <laughs> I think for our next, our next like group get together, we should rob a bank. 
Um, and then when we get taken to court for it, we'll just be like, we didn't know that there were cameras, and then no, we'll, see, yeah, I mean, we'll split the money and we'll be good. Because we're recording right no, now. So. No, we, we didn't denied, know that so we were broadcasting gonna, gonna, live. Like, this is being recorded <laughs> on yeah. the internet that we were going to rob a bank. <laughs> what the fuck? No. Okay, okay, yeah, see, so. see, Demir is smarter than that, though. He says, like, haha, we've told everybody on the internet we're going to rob a bank. Instead, we're going to rob a 7 Eleven. <laughs> Demirin's, he's uh, already demiran has got 40 chests on this. He's already robbed the bank. We got to get those <laughs> hot dogs that have been on the hot dog roller for 40 hours. Yes. yes. Shriveled up freaking sausages. Yeah, good. Throw them off with the old 7 Eleven trick. Uh, yeah. So, 7 Eleven? I was say, they had those up in uh, Canadian. Whoa, 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 whoa. You said what's a 7 Eleven? Not since like the 90s, I think. <laughs> yeah. Oh okay, anyway. Harpy now. I do. I've never had one of those, actually. Let's get in. Okay, we need to go to Jack in the Box. To 7-Eleven. I actually don't know what Jack in the Box is. Oh, God. Oh, my God. You have to. <laughs> Jack in the Box tacos. You have to, like, like what they're terrible. The they're oh, they're amazing. I love them. No, uh, you're gonna like, go, like they're actually they're search the no, fried tacos. They're fried tacos. Search the internet it's for like, Jack in the Box commercials, and mm-hmm. you it's will. Like a, oh, oh my god! Anybody like in chat place? had yeah, it's a like a Hardee's, except they have like oh my many god. tacos. What's a Day drinker, What are you doing to me right now? Day drinker derailed us. Let's get into the news. <laughs> How do you know what a Hardee's is? Hardee's here. You know what a Hardee's. Carl's Jr. though. Carl's Jr. I can see you not the same knowing. Thing. It's like know. steak and shake. No, like no. Steak and no. shake. Oh, they sell many I couldn't hear what you guys were saying. Okay, so I, I don't know what Hardee's is. So while I do now, it's a burger place. I don't know what Jack in the Box is. What is a Carl Jr.? Carl's Jr. The is the same thing, except no, 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 no. It's not the same. Because how many fast food places does this country you? have? Every year somebody tells me about a new one. How? How? There's like <laughs> 10 of them in Canada and there's like 7,000 of them in America. Red Robin? You ever heard of that one? That I have one? eaten that's at Red Robin before. Food, that's, not fast food. That's, <laughs> like that's not really fast food. Fridays, yeah. But I did so, like oh it. It was good. A Carl's <laughs> Jr. Carl's Jr. and Hardee's are almost the same except answer me this. Yeah. Can you owner. order fried zucchini at a Hardee's? No. The answer is no. Answer me huh? this. Why answer the me this. fuck would I? <laughs> yeah, what? Trust me. Oh my god. Oh. You yeah. When I can, when I I can have fried onions. Yeah. Or chicken. <laughs> I hate, hate, hate zucchini. Zucchini you and hate, cucumber are I'm awful. Telling you, I'm telling you right awful. now. You 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 think okay, you wait, hate wait, it wait, until wait. you've had it from party at my house because I have one of those two, a Hardee's or Carl's Jr. right next to me. Anyway. It's a Hardee's. We don't have them here. It's a Hardee's. Kelly. Yeah, Carl Jr. doesn't exist here. But they have like, it's, you know. It's Kelly, it's save us. Them. Anyway, you, 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 yeah, you got to so, fix this. Speaking of Pokemon. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Why is Brian acting like me trying to push us along? I know it's guy? weird. Like we're in this in like 30 minutes. Are we going um, to Pokemon now? Because America has like 151 <laughs> variations of fast food. So now we're going to talk about 151 variants of Pokemon too. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. All well, right. Yeah. Sick. Go ahead. Sick. Go ahead. Um, if, if you're at a computer right now and you look down at your pathetic, boring, pathetic, boring keyboard. Yeah. Um, and you're thinking, boring. even with RBGB, pathetic and boring. Yes. If you're thinking, I'd really like to spice this puppy up, and I would like some Pokemon keycaps, I have the article for you. Um, article? Kotaku, I don't think I've ever said that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kotaku, wait until you see this. Yes, they're beautiful. Okay, Kotaku um, reported about an Etsy artist named Hirosarp. Forgive me, Hero Start, if I'm mispronouncing your page. Um, and if you are, please let her know because I would love to just shame her on public <laughs> that she's you could wrong. Email hey, us at GOA at sasgaming.com. Yes. <laughs> email away. Um, they are resin uh, keycaps, but they have different Pokemon in them. 
but wait for it. There's a good Pikachu. They're, they're basically um, customizable. So you, they're like made to order, order Pokemon keycaps. So oh. you can request four different Pokemon in their own little environments in your space bar for well, uh, 175 plus. Or, or regular or, keycaps as well. Yeah. Because they got individual keycaps, ones. Yeah. So and what, these are amaze balls. I, I cannot beautiful. stress a month enough. They're beautiful. I cannot stress enough where Daydrinker said mm-hmm. a Pokemon in their environment. Mm-hmm. It is amazing gorge. looking. Yes. Um Total gorge. they, have, they um here's our uh also has different things in the keycaps too. So it's not exclusively Pokemon. You can get, um, they've got beautiful um, koi fish in different koi fish environments. It's, these keycaps are beautiful. There's the great example of um, the the Pokemon space bar. So Yeah, the space bar is just incredible because it goes between multiple different environments with a Mm. fire environment uh, to like a desert desert ish for the Pikachu to more of a waterfall and then into frozen. I just like the level of detail in these small little itty B things. Pretty incredible. Like that's a, that's a human thumb there. And this is a regular <clears throat> old space yeah. bar. I think that the LAPD um, would be really interested in the Snorlax. <laughs> uh, escape- <laughs> <laughs> but they but, can't I mean, afford it now because they got fired. These are these are super. Oh wait, let me see if I can cool. find that. <laughs> yeah, but I could never incorporate one in my keyboard because it wouldn't Your match. It's already amazing. No, it just my keyboard's all black, and I feel like you need to have like a white keyboard or like a a blue or something colorful yeah. for it to fit. And I just did the math on how much it would cost an entire keyboard of mine, which is 105 keys. Oh yes. Maybe. And that's like a minimum of five and a half grand, which well, I no, mean, no, 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 no. The individual keys are fifty bucks a piece. Yeah, yeah. yeah so oh, I said five and a half grand. Oh, okay, so sorry. wait, hold on. I would like to just make day drinkers' dreams come true. I am displaying the Snorlax keycap. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> They're awesome, though. Your oh. wish is my demand. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Amaze balls. <laughs> I mean, like, oh. okay, so he, here's the thing, too, though. Keycaps are specific to the keyboards and the switches that you use and how they connect. And I mean, I'm kind of a fan of mechanical keyboards, but I'm not so much of a fan to get into that scene, which is like you can legit build your own mechanical keyboard. Like, yeah, they they can they can give you this the the base board. You purchase your own switches. You put your own switches. You put your own keycaps on, and it's just it's insane. It gets super expensive, and. I mean, like, I j- I'm just like, I'm kind of a Logitech fan, but the trouble is Logitech is very specific to the keycap, so no one makes anything custom for them. So I'm kind of like looking at this going, oh, man, I can never do that with my keyboard. It sucks. But I don't know. It, for for I would assume that they are going to be compatible with Cherry keycaps, one of the most popular switches out there. Yeah, I mean, the description actually says a lot of the descriptions say that the uh, and some of the reviews say that the person that makes them will customimize them to whatever key type you're looking for. Some people are actually posting reviews saying that they failed to provide them the right size for the keyboard and they just had them return the entire key and they replaced it for free. Good God. So like, seriously, the, the just the amount of detail that they put in this, I'm looking at the space bar and seeing the frozen mm-hmm. side go into a mountain. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they do. Really they nice. are absolutely beautiful. A hundred percent. I'd say that they are worth the money that they're asking for. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, definitely. It, 
when you're talking about artist space, right? People actually making something mm. as an artist, right. like yeah, the hundred seventy nine dollars is crazy for a space bar, but you're talking about the person's time and money and like effort mm-hmm. they did to to create this thing. Well, and if you had the money to like do that and spend money on a keyboard, then buy it. Sure, especially yeah. compared the- to some of the like, no disrespect, meant Etsy has a lot of variety in it. Let's just call mm-hmm. it that. Some yeah. of it is similar to Dragon Con, where there's blatant ripoff of copyright. Oh, yeah. 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 Or um, just copies of copies. Like, it's just the same vendor uh, right. over and over. Uh, to see something that is genuinely looks... I mean, granted, yes, the Pokemon themselves is not original art. I mean, that... Granted, but the concept of like, okay, making them individually in resin and in environments and stuff like that. Uh, okay. That, okay. I'll shut up. Cause Demir and no, wants no, to talk about Dragon not, Con. No, no, it's not. It's not that I, I decided to back out and see what other keycaps Etsy had. And they, they just, it turned Bad? into things involving butt oh. plugs and. <laughs> Um, I'm and 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 yeah. anime and uh <laughs> yeah yeah it's 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 not great. Well, not you have great. to say keycaps, not end caps, because no, they're no 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 they're they're there's keycaps of don't space worry. Bar, it. Space it. bar has tons <laughs> of room for bukaki. Oh, so oh, uh, you'd be surprised what they can fit on not space bar keys based on what I'm seeing right now. <laughs> the attention to detail on. is very much there. Wow. Did it grab your attention? Did it did it get your, did it get your attention? Got Bruno's I mean, I attention. I use some of these. They're like resin tiny little bodies. I they, they hey, look don't you have a resin printer? I do. Yeah, you want some keycaps like this? No. <laughs> I mean, I actually know some people who would. So Have you seen my wares? <laughs> Maybe later. yes, apparently. <laughs> I'm gonna get you some. Not key me caps. personally, but I do know. I'm gonna get you some keycaps shaped in a way that they listen, can penetrate maybe your fingertips. Two people in mind. Listen, if Day Drinker was gonna get custom resin mm-hmm. keycaps, it would be hard mm-hmm. cocks all the way across the rock hard cocks the whole way. Totally, Man, absolutely, one hundred percent. Many. She'd be stroking her fingers. She'd be like, I'm I'm real. across all of those cocks. She she'd be she'd be and like, like cocks, I, I mean, the male chicken. Male chicken, of course. I was course. Gonna say, this we're is what I was talking about. already at this point. Yeah. She was down. like, she was like, this is why people touch with 105 type. cocks on it. Yeah. Touch typing is really cool. Of different sizes, like the shift keys, one size of cock. Oh, the space no, bar no, no, is the no, biggest no. cock. Oh, yes, yes, 100%. Can you have cock fights with your keyboard? Is that like a thing? No, because um, they, they're, they're you static. You can slam them together. <laughs> <laughs> if, if it were an actual typewriter, you could. Yes. I just this, take uh, two yes. keyboards and just. Oh my God. Slam them we just together. dated ourselves. Uh, <laughs> Do you remember doing that? Save us. Ah. Speaking of dating ourselves. <laughs> so we that? talked, we've been talking a lot about the metaverse and this whole like NFTs and blockchain and all this just random stuff that the new world is providing with us. And I saw something that was posted. This is actually a CNBC article at that. Uh, but the middle of it was that people are starting to buy. Let me make sure I read this correctly. Investors are paying millions for virtual land in the metaverse. So let me get this straight. We have oh we have God. this thing called the metaverse, right? No, and, and if you don't I know, think what I'm that's, no, about, I think what's worse is it's not. There's no. There is no metaverse. There's several separate metaverse worlds that are trying to launch. Right. So which is even worse. If you're not familiar with like what the concept of like the metaverse, and this is your first time it's hearing like NFTs. This, <laughs> it's it's like watch the movie Ready Player One. No, no, or, no. Or, Go read or just Snow watch, Crash. Snow no, I mean, Crash. Like, if you just want to see something really quick. I'm not saying read a book. I'm, I'm just saying like but the idea is like, look at fit, like Fortnite, for example. You have like the, all these <laughs> random characters in a world that shouldn't exist, but they do. So that that's kind of like the idea of the metaverse, right? So we have like Agreed. this. Basically, it all it all lives in databases, and it's just servers powered up to do things, right? Mm. And you eventually will wear VR, and you'll be able to join these areas it, with your avatars for, and such. 
who has heard of Decentraland? I have. I'm impressed. Of course, of course, Samirin has. Of course, he not has. only have I heard of Decentraland, I've oh done a lot God. of research into Decentraland, and I know people who own pieces of Decentraland. He, Somebody he, paid two point five million for a patch of land in Decentraland. Yeah, which, correct. Which that's a lot of gives money. you what? <laughs> it gives you a unique location within Decentraland that is mapped to a real world area like on planet Earth. Okay. So, so like uh <clears throat> anyways, I'll let I'll let Mike continue with this. So uh, like for example on this one, like Snoop Dogg apparently so this is a rich person thing, right? Like if you yeah, want to have right. a lot of money, you have nowhere to put it. Yeah, you, you buy fake land in a fake area. Because, again, you're not buying the server, right? You're not buying the hard drive space, which is what these things are running off of, right? But you're buying a piece of land that's being hosted on this random thing. So somebody actually recently paid $450,000 to be Snoop Dogg's neighbor in a virtual world called The Sandbox. And I'm just reading the article. This is, like, straight up. I'm not even making this stuff up. This is just, like, straight headline. <laughs> So like I don't don't get me wrong. I don't get it. Paying that really kind crazy. of money makes sense if like okay, so let's step back a second. Let's say you create a metaverse that is super popular. Millions of people go and visit this every day. Then yes, Coca-Cola is gonna spend $5 million for a plot of land to put something up on a corner of a busy, let's say crossroads where tons of meta citizens are walking by. Not in and, my virtual backyard, but yeah, what, but what I'm saying is, but what I'm saying is it's not there yours because if it's the metaverse, it's owned by a set of corporations and people are visiting it. So advertising tends to pay that. Uh, being the neighbor of Snoop Dogg, another thing, but like I've, I've oh now Demiran has heard of these, so that's kind of cool. Uh, I haven't heard of any of these. Cool. So like, what's, what's the point if it's so exclusive that almost no one's visiting it? Yes. It's, that's the thing. It's, it's exclusive to some degree now, which it's, it's weird. You think it's super exclusive. Like a lot of people think, oh, like there's probably like a hundred to like a couple thousand people invested. There isn't the P the, the, the population of people that have visited or concurrently visit or go to Decentraland on a daily basis is not like a couple hundred. It's, it's thousands. The whole deal with it is sure, thousands, now, but well, now it's small, right? Because VR in general is, not the largest market yet. It's growing. Good and point. with the with how affordable the quest is, just over this holiday season, quest got sold out in a lot of places. Right. So the attention on VR is growing and it's growing quickly, which means that if the metaverse takes off, these people are in it a lot earlier. And the fact that there will be places that these famous people own, and you could definitely see somebody like Snoop Dogg putting on a virtual headset and actually hanging out at his own property. People oh, yeah. could go he, there in a virtual space and meet these famous people with these famous people having no physical commitment. Right. So they're more he's, likely he's to he's actually interact with known. people. He's definitely so, one known to Twitch stream. Um, for the, certain. Yeah. So the or overarching <laughs> idea <laughs> is... I love... I mean, Snoop Dogg... I am... He is besties with my... I would love to be my bestie. I'll, no, no offense to my bestie. Um, is that weed? Is this the three degrees of separation from Snoop Dogg that we're talking about here? Martha Stewart, sir. Oh, I, was, yeah. like, <laughs> I knew that was oh, his yeah. best friend was weed, but okay. No, his best friend's no. Martha Stewart. Oh, his they best, both no, his best weed. friend is yes. weed. His Hello. best associate is, shared, is Martha shared, Stewart. You know, enjoyment. It's that's. <clears throat> Can't be best but, friends with an inanimate object. It's I don't know about so that. So you can be best to friends with like the metaverse. To summarize really simply, the reason why these people are spending True. this money is because it's prime location. Like it's prime land in this virtual thing. And arguably, 
Well, not even arguably. The the focus is that that land will be limited, even though it's limitless in the sense that it's a virtual world. They're not going to make it infinite. Their idea is similar to Decentraland that in the metaverse, it will be mapped to a real world geographical location I mean, so that there's not an infinite amount of land, meaning that like ma- like pieces of land are worth something. So big corporations will want to be centralized in high population places where they can get advertisements and have people come to. Right. So like to, to be it fair, makes sense. But to be fair, totally something get like it. this <clears throat> has to start somewhere. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you're absolutely right. And I cannot stress enough. All you motherfuckers need to go out there and read Snow Crash because like you're all talking about Ready Player One and Snow Crash is the genesis of this shit. Yeah, I, I get that. I never denied that. I'm just saying that like that's the one I connect no. with. So. Uh, I understand you connect with it. I'm saying go read this because it's worth reading or audiobook or whatever because yeah, there's I mean, I a lot of concepts. Mike, Mike doesn't <laughs> even listen audiobook. to podcasts. No, Mike doesn't even listen to podcasts. No, I, that's yeah. true. No. Oh, I, hey, listen, I don't know. All we got to do is, okay, so uh, I'll, I'll drive down to you, Kelly. We'll go um, over there. We will okay. tie him up. Go, 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 put go. headsets. He'll just see oh, us no. coming on his nest and be hey, like, d- don't, don't forget. We have in. the secret way in where he can't tell how we get in the house. That's right. There's no batteries in that one. We're good. I'll lock my wife out of the house too. We're not, we're not doxing him. Uh, oh yeah. Sorry. And we'll tie him up and we'll put headphones on and have him listen to this audio book. But no, like it, it's, it's worth checking out because Neil Stevenson, the author of snow crash, like predicted a lot of this shit. decades ago and Mm -hmm. it's very much the path we're going down right now the the whole concept of having this metaverse having people virtually like log into it and want to be seen and see uh, or be seen by celebrities and having areas where celebrities can shine and other areas where restrictions kind of lock things down um it's it's really amazing actually guaranteed my grand, my children or grandchildren are going to be watching me saying all of this and being like, oh my God, that's ridiculous. And they're going to be like, oh, grandma, she didn't know any better. Bless yeah, it was so heart. cute. They're going to say, bless the her heart. They won't even, like, they'll, they'll, say, but honestly, I think Bill Gates recently said that in three years, most corporations will be meeting via the metaverse, which I think is a little bit too soon. Yeah. Because most corporations are run by older people who are like, what's a, what's a smartphone? Because they're like in their eighties. <laughs> so like we at least having, home is convincing, convincing these people that they got to put on VR headsets and get their people to put on VR headsets. It's silly. And also VR tech, although it's improving is still very much in its infancy, but Listen, we at I least know, need to get it work zoom. So yeah. it's so easy to get these people on. All you gotta do is introduce them to porn. Well, I mean, that's the reason the internet exists. But my, my end, yeah. VR headset on, show them some porn, they'd be all okay. in. My end like, point oh, is, porn does drive innovation. That's 100% yes. true. That's why oh, yeah, VHS won out over beta. Well, that's what, <laughs> okay, that's, except, except, except Blu-ray did not, the porn industry chose, what was the other one? Uh, uh, yeah, HD, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, was, yeah. I, and that's so I bought like an HD right disc but for, player. The, for it, the most it, part mm, and I was pissed I for was the like, most porn part their with innovations all this stuff. like chapter markers and videos which YouTube is going big on came mm. from that industry the concept of tokens for paying people came from them there's like innovation after innovation after innovation that's coming Wait, from are them. we going to be in trouble for saying the pron nope. word okay. no nope, we are not <laughs> and and oh. hey listen <laughs> Day drinker, you and mm-hmm. me are both on the same page. Sex work is work. Is work. It and absolutely is it's, work. 100% it's, is work. It's, it's okay. Mm-hmm. There's mm-hmm. no disrespect for that industry. <clears throat> no, nope, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Which is why I chose the other got an HD DVD player. And that, that's what it was. Yeah, HD DVD. Wants you nailed see, it. Nobody wants to see that stuff in HD. It's a little too real. You see uh, all those everybody and... does want to see it because what do they sell? HD I DVDs. Eight, I mean, HD, you can, I mean, I don't know for sure. Some. I've heard that you can get prawn in HD. I just, I just, I've heard that. I'm in yeah. 4K now, girl. 
<laughs> yeah, we'll have to Google Thank that you. later. Thank you. But, um, we'll cut a rock later. To to go back to the metaverse thing, I think I think about five years is when VR is going to start hitting its real stride, where the majority of consumers start picking it up. Yeah, it'll be about five years because the technology's got to get better. Um, Two more cycles. It's, it's, yeah, it's already doing well. Like for the fact that the Quest Two, yeah. everything is built in and like doesn't require a computer. Like that already gives a more usability for most people because as a parent. You know, as a kid that, you know, like a 12 year old or whatever, they want to do VR. Like, I'm not buying him a brand new computer that can right. do all this stuff just to get the VR headset that's going to cost. Like, I'm not going to do that. But, like, but as, as right. much as you say that, and it runs. Right. the biggest drawback of VR is the motion. And right. I don't see them solving a lot of the motion problems for five to 10 years. Oh, I think you're severely underestimating how quickly they're how much money they're investing into this. Oh, I know how much money they're investing in it. It's just that you're literally talking about fooling the ears versus versus fooling the brain. And that's where you get problems with motion. Now, it, it, escape simulator uh, or um sorry, I expect you to die and I expect you to die too. They get around it because they have you seated and everything you do in the game is seated. So the only motion you have is the motion you're looking around. So that's natural and that's okay. But like, like a first person shooter or traversing the metaverse in a more natural way, as opposed to teleporting, that's going to take a little bit more time because you've got, you've got to fool the ears somehow. And I think that's going to take a little bit more technology than what we're looking at for a while. Well, about, how, about also like your body, like you can definitely fool your body into thinking it's cold, but like actually being cold. That well, haptic is is, the haptic technology is coming. I mean, that's that that's definitely early, early stages. But mm. I mean, that that'll be easier because all you have to do is like cool a suit down and be responsible. They don't, to, like, they don't have to solve yeah. for all that for the metaverse. Like you guys are thinking that the Not metaverse all is yeah. all incorporated. They don't have to solve movement in the sense of that like they don't have to like yeah. locomotion works perfectly fine and the different Im uh, implementations of locomotion such as like when you walk like you, if you move your controllers from side to side like you're walking your character will walk in some games and then if you like act like you're running with your controllers your character will run in the game is how some games are doing it now like that's already enough for most people to be satisfied yeah. like and some people are legitimately satisfied satisfied by just hitting a button and teleporting forward well Which, yes people are more and less sensitive to mm. those things. But the concept that we're trying to get is the metaverse to the level where the advertising and the payoff back to the original story of investing in these plots of land means that it has to be mainstream. And the trouble is, is that most of the motion stuff that's mainstream makes people physically ill. Because their ears are telling them they're not moving, but their eyes are telling them that they are moving. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't know how many people, percentage-wise, I haven't seen statistics on how many people actually get affected by motion sickness wearing VR. Like, the majority of people I've had try VR, of, like, the probably, like, couple dozen of them, only, like, two of them have been like, I can't do this. It's making me motion sick. Yeah, it depends, though, on, on the VR, too. Because, like, game. some of the early... The early vibes like that were, you know, PC powered. Like if you don't have a high end PC to run that, those graphics and stuff, it it yeah. lags a little bit. And if you do that, then mm -hmm. it really matters. Like even me, like when I first tried the first vibe, like it gave me a little bit of motion sickness depending on what I was doing. Like Bone what type works. of simulation I was doing. Play Bone Works. Right on. Is that the one where you could yeah. be like Deadpool and Spider Man and on the bridge and stuff. Like all I'm saying is it's stuff. one of the ones that like said, we're just going to do motion and fuck all y'all. And it, it's one of the ones that really causes people that are susceptible to the motion sickness to really just puke their guts out. There's legitimately a, like a racing game where like you're sliding around on like metal skates through weird loops and shit. And you do it by doing locomotion by running. So if you can play that game yeah. and not puke your brains out, you're going to be fine with pretty much everything else. <laughs> I, I mean, it all depends. Different but people are going to be triggered by different things. God knows realistically, that trigger is triggered by the, like ASMR. And so stop! There, see, uh, see, exactly. There, um, uh, there will never be 
there, there will not be perfect motion in VR until Elon Musk gets his way and starts implanting chips in oh people's God. brains. <laughs> no, 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 see that I agree with. Oh, that Neuralink I agree with happening. is that Neuralink is is when that actually happens. And yes. And also when people probably start dying from their brains getting exploded. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm not going to be on that. Well, <laughs> in other news, we God, have reached is railroading me today. How about End things getting killed off? Yeah. Of an era. That's right. We have reached the end of the era. Microsoft mm. has officially announced that they have discontinued manufacturer of the Xbox One. You say disc continued? Is that a no discontinued? <laughs> like disc, like the disc. Must be nice. Oh, don't try, Mike. I thought it was try. fun. I thought it was a pun. So they're working to focus the production on Xbox Series X and S. They stopped production for all Xbox One consoles by the end. Mm -hmm. They say by the end of 2020, that's really old. I mean, again, I will go on record that 2020 is the longest year ever. <laughs> and that we're still in it. Um, so I, I don't know why this article literally says Cindy Walker, senior director of Xbox console product marketing made the statement to the verge to focus on production of the Xbox series X and S. We stopped production for all Xbox one consoles by the end of 2020. That was a while ago. Does she know? I mean, in, uh, does Actually, she know I mean, that 2020, uh, like, I, I mean, mean I, I contend 2020 hasn't ended either. Oh, so, yeah. but yeah, this is 2020 also. So maybe that's, I don't in all seriousness. No. I, I mean, the the chipset needed for the Xbox One consoles was going to be harder and harder to get hold of because it's an older chipset to be built. Uh, and certainly they would want production being as it is and being supply chains the way they are right now and trying to get a hold of things being Not as difficult that. as it is. They probably want to focus on the Xbox Series S and X, especially since we seem to have pretty much 100% compatibility back to the Xbox One console at the minimum. Uh, much less the backwards compatibility that they've done for the Xbox 360 and the original OG Xbox, including the perennial favorite finally mm -hmm. being available, Time Splitters Future Perfect being available. Uh, um, also, for those that uh, like the, uh, what is it? The, uh, damn it, I forgot it. The Blood on the Sand one. Blood on the Sand. Yeah, the uh, 50 Cent. That's right, 50 Cent Blood on the Sand, uh, which you cannot buy digitally. Oh. <laughs> so the only way to use backwards compatibility is to get a physical disc of it which is now selling for like over a hundred dollars on eBay, which is <gasps> just incredibly I, I insane. Like, we did report on that a couple of weeks ago. I, I was going to say, did we report on this or did I just read it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. It was a couple of weeks ago. We talked about that. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting to see that they've decided to shut down production of this console. I feel Especially like it's too since, soon, but it's been a minute. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. everything after the though? 360 for me is like, feels like it's been forever. So, uh, so when do they release the series? That was November 2020, right? So it's been over a year, hasn't it? Uh, yeah, it's 19, been over a year. 2019. 2019? It was 2020? 2020. 2020. During the pandemic? Yeah. Yep. Oh, I guess you're right. Cause we, yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, was the first year season one. So yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. 2020. Yeah, mm -hmm. November 10th, 2020. So it's been over a year uh, for the shutdown. I mean, considering the supply chain, I think it's about the right time. If it if we didn't have all these problems, maybe a little early because they tend to run the older consoles, Sony and Xbox, and for Nint Nintendo for that matter, for a couple of years because they have the audience for it. Yeah. They were like, it, do you remember the like the the super tiny little 360 they released? 
So the know. Xbox One was released in November of 2013. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been seven years and it's been in production. So like for them yeah. to just continue so, that doesn't surprise me. Well, so one well, that's actually it. So Brian and I were talking about this. I think it was on the last, maybe it was during the break on the last podcast. But um, if you have not seen the Xbox documentary, you mm, should yes. definitely watch it. It's a six part series. It is fan ta- power on is what it's called. You should definitely watch it. They actually talk about a lot of things and about how the Xbox one had such a long well, um, lifespan it, between the other releases and especially how like down to the wire some things were mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. going from like barely a concept to actually something releasable within a extremely yeah. short amount of time like not even not even having an actual product when Sony mm-hmm. says hey we've announced the PS2 Yep. Uh, to like saying, Hey, we're going to release the Xbox and then actually releasing it granted a year later. If you count the Japan release of the PS2, yeah. uh, not quite a year later for the U S release, the PS2, but still like, it's amazing how close it was to not having this console. And I, I cannot, I'm, I have both. I literally mm. can reach down and I've touched both with my feet at the same time, both the Xbox and the PS5. A little pet pet. That's that was a little creepy anime. Uh, but <laughs> no, seriously, I can't imagine a world where we don't have both of these consoles right now. And how close we came to not having the Xbox and pushing along. Some of Sony's innovations came because of the competition. Let's yeah, face it. Absolutely. And I mean, yeah. same thing could said for Microsoft and Sony in general for like Nintendo because they, yeah. they started their thing yeah. and everybody else was like trying to do their thing and Sega and it was like Atari and you know, it, you should, it, it, you should definitely always watch in competition. It. Even, yeah, always even in competition. not being a console owner. No, I mean, um, I like history. I'll, I'll yeah. watch it. You should totally watch it. It's, it's great. I didn't love the narrator. But she she didn't have a big part in it. Um, but it is it was really fantastic, I thought so. Absolutely. Mm. So yeah, kind of interesting. Now, granted, they say production shut down. That means that you'll still be able to buy these for a while. I think it is interesting how production shuts down on a product, say for instance the Dodge Viper or <laughs> the Jeep. Uh, what was it? It was like Jeep Liberty or something like that. Yeah. The Liberty. There was, there was these vehicles that have been shut down for years and years and years and years. Mm-hmm. But if you go out and you can see like, Oh, 400 people bought this Jeep in the last year that hasn't been produced since 2017. Mm hmm. Five Dodge Vipers have been sold, even though they haven't been produced since 2015 or something like that. I I might have my dates wrong. I don't know. I don't know that the Viper is easily purchasable from like an actual Dodge dealership anymore. Brand new. I think they're all used now. No, no, they they uh, up until recently still had brand new ones sold at the dealership. It was but not a huge number. We're talking about like three or four a year. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, we're not talking about in mass, but it's it's super weird that they have these brand new vehicles that have been sitting around for five years or something, mm-hmm. and people buy them brand new. For clarity, the uh, Dodge Viper is like my dream car. So when they cease production of them, the cost of all the Vipers beforehand went from being dirt cheap to being insanely expensive. So the majority of models that predate the loss of production of them in, I think it was 2018 was the last one or 2017. Um, like all the 1990 Vipers went from being worth like 20 grand, 30 grand to being like 140. And I'm like, damn. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> well, goals though. Goals. Goals. Hey, no, 
Demiran, if I hit a multi hundred million dollar jackpot, some lottery thing, I will get you a Viper. Yeah, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Being the fact that I never play the lotto, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I right, do cool. occasionally. Yeah, I do too. It's fun. We're going to take a break. <laughs> uh, hang out with us. We'll be back after this short message from our sponsor. <laughs> but what do I know? <laughs> and we're back <laughs> because this show has to hit the road. According to Phoenix today, hit he is the in road, charge. Jack, and don't the guy back. Who no was more, like, no more, no I more. I have to do meditation. He's singing. He's singing. I have to you do meditation. Got a drink. Day drinker. Yeah, that tastes like go. rum. Ooh. So does this. Ooh. Huh? True. I don't know why, though. There's no rum in it. There is rum. Oh. But just, where's the rum gone? It's gone. So, this week on what we've been playing. I'm going to start off with our game of the moment, as we typically do. Uh, Brian hosted a game that he hated. A uh, game that he could not stand. Uh, that he said, hey, could I'm going to host this game. And we're like, What? What do you mean that you didn't like it? He's like, I know I don't like it, but I'm going to host it. I'm like, okay. So he shows us a game called Inscription. Brian, take it away. All right, great. Uh, so, <laughs> so Inscription is a card game. I guess, uh, I mean, you can correct me if I'm wrong. It's like a deck building game is what most people would consider it. Uh, at the face level, uh, you're on mute, by the way, Brian. You're just, I like it like this. I'd rather him not. I, be I don't actually talking. think he's on mute. I think he's literally just, just mouthing the words. Oh, no, I was muted. Yeah. Or ah, so, uh, so you're pulling it. So at the face value of the game, it, it's a card game, deck building game. Uh, but there's a lot more to it. And as we gone through our playthrough with him on Tuesday for Game of the Moment, uh, we noticed that uh, there was a lot of puzzles based in this game as well. So uh, there's a there's a playing board that kind of rolls out a lot you get to of. play. Noticed. Well, I flat out pointed it out to you. Uh-oh. I said, so oh, there's look, a game. you pull away from this and you go look at these other things. Yeah. So you're playing on a table. You roll the mat out. Your little uh, character thing moves across the board and you do different things as the events you yes. land on. Um, but then you can literally step away from the table and kind of look around this, this little cabin that you're kind of locked in. Uh, and there's like different little puzzles around the room. There's like a cuckoo clock that you have to figure out something with. There's like a painting to figure out something with. And a few other random things in there that have like, you know, number puzzles and like uh, trying to figure out the order of certain things. And it was just a really neat kind of game. Uh, sort of, I mean, I, and I get the deck building side and I get why, um, you know, Phoenix doesn't like that. He's not really into that kind of game. Um, but I guess what piqued his interest at least was like the room, right? Because there's a lot of things in that room that isn't just the typical like deck building game, not to mention the very creepy aesthetic this game has, because it definitely has. Uh, and I it's, said it during the stream, I think it reminded me of Saw. Like it was mm-hmm. like very creepy dude who's like kidnapped you oh, and yeah, wants you to play a game. And all you can see is the little eyes blinking like you can't really see him because he's in the shadows, like just watching you the whole time. And where's Matt? It's a very interesting game. Yeah. And he wears make, different masks. He like role plays with you. People. Yeah. yeah. He's a, like he's like totally little... in it. Mm-hmm. Except he's out to kill you. Um, but yeah, the loop is very, <laughs> very straight up. Uh, you you play the, the game, you land in different places, and then as you uh, lose, you can lose twice because you have two candles, which represent your life. And on the second one you lose, he basically kills you. Um, but the loop is cool because it actually... What the hell? Oh, you know what's going so I'll fix that. Is that an HD DVD you were playing there? Like <laughs> no, I was trying to pull up our footage and forgot that so, I would broadcast the sound. So it seems like they're uh, so after you die, like because most of these mm. games, like these like deck building roguelike games, like you die and then it comes back and you're a little, little stronger every time so you can keep moving forward. Uh, the neat little loop in this one is when you died, you get to create your death card before he kills you. He's like, all right, so if you he die. shows you. Yeah, if you die. He shows if you a couple you different die, cards. If you die, not when, as we well, we'll learned. Because Demiris okay. plays it, he doesn't die, apparently. Which is, yeah. like, blows my fucking mind. So, he, uh, so you make a death card, and it's basically a card. You take, like, 
you know, the the health, the hit points of one card versus or like the hit points and the attack on one card. Then you pick like the type of card. Then you pick like the the extra attributes that it has. And like that creates a random death card and you name it. And then that in the next playthrough, that card is in your deck or it can be in your deck. You may find it uh, and you can use it again in the future. But what's cool is that loop. So as you die again, that same card is now in your deck and then you can maybe use that card to make something more powerful and so forth, so on. Um, so there's a neat little mechanic like that. If you die, uh, that was pretty neat, but that wasn't enough to kind of pique my interest, but we were playing it. He played, you know, Phoenix played it and I had to get it. Cause I was like, I have to check this game out because it had just enough card I game, make just clear, enough mystery. While Zycia has said this, I want to make clear that he had to get this. Even though I said, I did not like this game. Yeah, and Which I was you demonstrating. Said that, but then it. you you still played an extra like thirty minutes past the time that I expected That's you to play true. the game. Uh, we, and you were sure. like, "Yeah, had, this had, game had just had keeps it, going yeah. and keeps going." And we're like, "But I thought you hate this game." Like, I do, I do, but I keep playing. I'm like, <laughs> "No, like, I would say I keep playing." I was demonstrating it for you and ended up having a good oh, run. Long, okay, but I, I yeah. legit did not. I do not like the game, and so, it was enough to. I at least presented it in a fair enough manner that you purchased it and did far better than I have ever done. That is for sure. So I bought it and I did all the things that, you know, we kind of did on the stream and kind of made my own characters and, you know, I died a few times and, you know, went through uh, and I got a really good run one time and I got a really, really amazing card and it made it even better when I did something to it. Uh, And I I basically at that point on, like I, kind of just wiped the floor with every boss like that that playthrough i could just beat anything i that i got put in front of me um which led me to beating the game i thought spoilers <laughs> by the thought, way if uh which i thought was funny if, if you have not played this game and are interested in playing this game fast forward because the next parts are going to be spoilers for the most yeah. part um so after you beat the game uh he mentioned earlier on uh in the playthrough that there was no start game like there was only a continue. Uh, and I was like, oh, that's kind of weird. I didn't know if he was talking about because like he you know, started yeah. midway. Or, I, I don't know. Um, or the play that he was on, he has to continue. But the, the point was when you start the actual game, you install it. You literally only have continue. So you're like, it's kind of weird. Um, so you beat the game. You actually get the new game icon. And and what that does is allows you to actually start the game, uh, which shows you through some other stuff that happens without giving too much away. Um, but it basically puts you into another game, which is like act two, which looks kind of like super Mario world and Pokemon. Like it's, it's top down, like, like 16 bit. Yeah. Um, and you're running around and you're basically seeing all the cabin and seeing all the things that you were just in, except in an eight bit form, along with three other like castles, essentially that have these like bad guys, like people in them that, the uh, that do, I got to see like buildings. It's like Mario three castles, yeah. whatever. Um, but it's like the different three, uh, there's like four people total that are the bad guys that you have to like defeat. Uh, and then they have their own environments that you have to go through and do this whole like little song and dance, but it was really neat. So it kind of threw me off guard. Like I didn't really expect that after the game. Uh, and I know we played something recently that frog fractions, which was kind of similar to like where it just, the genres are all over the place. And this is still like that. I mean, it's not changing the game completely. It's still a card game at that at heart. Like it's, it's still a card game. Um, it actually becomes more of a deck builder card game. Once you make that act two jump, uh, which I was telling them earlier about, because you actually can build your deck and, you know, spec out the the cards you do want, uh, or you can just auto complete it. You uh, you get to choose a base deck when you start that new mode. Yes. So you get to choose one of like the entities of deck building. Um, whether it be Beast or the Undead or what have you, and you get to to choose their specific core deck, and then you get to build upon it. Choose which cards yeah. you want to keep, which you don't. Make a deck of 20 and go ham. No more squirrels. And ham is that. And that's the thing. There isn't a... There is, there, actually, I think the squirrel cards are still in. I think I remember seeing them, but they're you not... You can it's a, choose it's a little different. the Beast deck and also yeah. go and get more squirrel cards, but yeah, I did not choose the same deck I that went we with the with. magic All deck. All I know <laughs> is I got an achievement for making the squirrels be able to do an attack. 
Cool. Which normally, uh, so for those that haven't played the game, the squirrels are the sacrificial game, uh, sac sacrificial cards. They're just meant to be able to play other cards in general. They're not meant to defend. They're yeah. not meant to like attack. They're not meant to do anything besides throw down there and just like totally destroy, which sucks because well, actually some of our fans and some of our people that it, uh, Zycia included are fans of the actual concept of squirrels. So it was kind of cool that I made my squirrels be able to attack. So essentially there's a lot to this game and I can see why there's like almost like a cult following behind this kind of game. Um, mm. Because it, at first it seems very much like kind of like a first person room thing with like the card or the, the card game in front of you and then once you kind of complete that there's some other like i said i'm not going to go into detail and give you all of it away like least some kind of you know surprise but um there's some other elements too that kind of you know they just seem different and it's kind of cool it's something that it's not reminded me of a game i talked about that i liked last year which was really cool um but yeah it's just it, it was a different experience and i'm glad that i'm on act two of it now uh i'm not going to say how many acts there are but it's pretty simple to look up literally just about to ask how many acts are there yeah uh I won't say it, but it's if you want to know, you can look it up, or or I've you can put pretty four much or five figure it out hours in this game, and Zycia has surpassed me in like one day. Three point seven hours total is what I have. Wow. I think so. But yeah, it's a lot of fun. I definitely recommend. It's it's nineteen ninety nine right now on Steam. Uh, probably the same price everywhere else. Maybe seventeen cheaper somewhere. Um, but it was. It's definitely well worth the twenty dollar game. It's I have two uh, hours into it right now. And he's already surpassed me, so go figure. But yeah, like it's it's definitely a game that um, if you like card building and deck building with some slight puzzles and just a random like like twist of turns, like that's it's a great game. I like it a lot. I, actually, I would not be surprised if one year from now when we go through our review of games of this year that we played or like this will it year be one of your favorite whatever. game. Of it may be one of my favorite games, but yeah, not overall favorite uh, so, game. It yeah. is so no we'll, monster we'll train, my friend. And that's the thing is, and that, and that's what I'll say is like, because we played Monster Train, we played Leap Hero, we played. Uh, I played another game on Xbox Game Pass. I can't remember the name of it right now. Um, and I, I even played some Magic last year, along with you know Hearthstone and stuff like that. And and all of those, in their own respect, have like their own you know like chemistry, their own special sauce, right? But for some reason, like I was really liking this one. Like I really enjoyed this one a lot. Like I'm, and I'm like itching to play it more because it really has captivated me. I mean, I agree with you. There and I'm not, not a card game person. <laughs> there are not too many games out there that can give you that visceral experience of grabbing a pair of pliers and yanking out your own teeth or taking a dagger and gouging out your own eye. And this game can give you that. <laughs> oh, it sure can. Oh my God. I, so, kind of side note, we were talking about this game, we as in everybody but me, because I was putting on makeup, Was <laughs> we're talking about this game, and if you watch uh, Phoenix's playthrough from Tuesday, mm -hmm. you, you see that you know, there's like, oh, you have to pull out your own eye, gadget out your own eye, you have to, you know, pull out your own teeth, and I was... It admits like contouring and Tamarian goes, yeah. So then like after I gouged out my own eye and then blah, blah, blah. And I just, I, 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 I died. I, I was dead on the floor. Like I was hysterical. I like, I couldn't in, in you guys did, couldn't hear me because I was on double mute. And uh, you were I, in your PJs with me and you lit up. I about lit the up. Fact about yes, this game the, allowed you to do something when, like take a dagger and go your own yeah. eye. Yeah. And then before we got yeah, I, I was dead then and I was also dead again when I was when we were before the show. I was like, oh my God, this is hysterical. Like it was just you so like you just gouge out your own eye and then blah blah blah. And it was like it's all like very uh but <laughs> easy going. The one uh, thing the last thing I'll say for anybody who wants to play it or does pick it up uh, because of like what we've talked about, like, like I said, you know what I like, and that's not usually my game, but I really enjoyed this one. We know um, you like but one thing games. I will say is if you, like you are that. in, if you are wanting to play this, don't feel like you have to be Demurin and not die uh, because this game has a lot of things that 
like a lot of Easter eggs. There's a lot of different Easter eggs in this game that doing certain things that do hurt you potentially could help you. Um, not saying everything does. I'm not saying you have to lose a million times in a row to like win the game or anything, but um, just know that there's a lot of different Easter eggs in the game that by doing things you typically probably wouldn't always do um, could end up helping you in the long run. So, I, th- I think to, to be very clear, um, even if I ever say that I play a game and I don't die in it, uh, that actually sometimes takes away from a lot of these games. Um, for example, like I didn't die at all, which means that I had to do three run throughs of the entire cycle fighting this guy to unlock all the puzzles and to get everything resolved so I can move on to the next phase. Whereas I think you could technically do it in one death and a playthrough if you did it in a different way. Yeah, um, like, oh, I did it and had to do it three times. Just yeah, he's, to he's got his yeah. monocle on. Like, <laughs> oh my god, I <laughs> have to lie it because you suck. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I hate to say it that way because it does sound I like I had to it, drop it, a could, twenty when I like you, got um, my golf yeah. cart. You also like, don't I make you sound like you're gatekeeping, but I know you're not. That's just the way. No, you, yeah, you're yeah, yeah. You good at games. That is, you don't get the way you play. Like, well, like in my run runs, I got to see a lot less things because of it. Not yeah. just the way he plays, but sometimes it is luck of it. It's literally luck of the draw. It is luck of the draw. If you, yeah. if oh, you yep, get yep, the yep. right cards, you can accidentally or just fall into a situation where you create a super overpowered card that just mows down everything the bosses throw at you. Yeah, that's literally what happened to me. Like on my, my last playthrough, that one I actually yeah. beat the, the first act in. Because I had that along with or my squirrels. Or you can be me who gets shit all the fucking time and gets 15,000 uh, uh, different like cards from all these different things that don't synergize together at all. And I get like, I get barn fucked over the like fucking like horse corral every, every day. Yeah. One of my run throughs, I had a very full <laughs> inventory. And when you have a full inventory, you keep getting these pack rats that are these two, two cards. And I got a lot of inventory slots and then i got a lot of these guys that merge cards together so i made like a four four and then i made another four four and then i merged them together and then i made another four four and then i merged that into the other one and eventually i ended up with like a 14 14 pack rat that i combined so that it hit three different like three different squares at the same time so i had i had a pack rat i had i had a, a, a like a laboratory rat on steroids yeah, so, so uh-huh. it's a really neat game. I, I can't stress it enough. Um, I definitely would say check it out. Like watch the video if you if you think that may be interesting to you. Because again, if you're not really into card games and deck building games, uh, you may have a time like like Phoenix that there just isn't your fun jam. Um, but if you're likely you know willing to play the type of game like that and are decent at it, then it's not a bad game. To check out because it, it is a, a very unique game in that sense. So. Uh, so, so Sycia, I hear you've been going to farmersonly.com. Uh, that's what was said. Yeah. Uh, I actually been playing a, I started playing. So I found this game up on my wish list for a minute and it was like $30. And to me, that was just out that's of my a, budget range. For that's this a game. lot of money for a game for I'm this game. No, for this game. Like I looked at the game. I looked at the reviews. It did not seem to me as a $30 game. So I put it on my wish list and said, Hey, if it ever goes on sale, I'll probably pick it up. Well, it went on sale. So I picked it up for like $9, a game of the year edition with all the, well, not game of the year, but like all of the extra add ons, like, you know, that you would get. Bells and whistles. Or yeah. So, uh, picked it up for like nine bucks, checked it out. Uh, and it's called uh, farmer's dynasty and it's very much a house flipper meets like Stardew Valley in a sense. Uh, so, and Stardew Valley in the sense of like you have a farm, you have to take care of it. You can grow crops. You have like fields of crops. Um, you have tractors and all this craziness. Uh, and then the house flipper part where you're actually having to fix your barns and fix your house and, you know, do all this stuff to like maintain. And, and that's kind of like how you get missions in the world is like people are like, hey, can you come fix my house or my barn? And you'll do that. And then they'll be like, hey, like I got this extra equipment here you can just have. And you're like, oh, OK, cool. Um, so I've done all of that and it's, it's actually pretty entertaining so far. Like it's, it's, uh, I guess you could say like therapeutic, but I will say the, the other part of this, which I, I talked to one of our, um, podcast friends, Narwhal, like he was saying he played it 
And and the the part that's really bad with this game is it's not a a, a good looking game in any sense. Like it's okay. It's not it's not terrible. There there's some things that are just kind of yeah, weird. Yeah. Um yeah. but the the bad part is the the interactions the relationships that you have because they market this as like you can also get married like you can meet somebody and like and that's why they said the farmers only joke because Who i was like like oh i can meet people but like the voice acting in this game i don't even say it's voice acting like we we made it like i think it was normal i made the joke it was like that sounds like microsoft's voice uh whatever it was henry or whatever Bob. winston uh and it literally does Maybe. it sounds like texas speech like they used like a texas speech engine to like create the person's oh, voice and it, so it, it very loses that sort of like intimacy with it but overall i mean as a farming sort of sim ish thing um not a bad game to pick up for like 10 bucks uh it's you know i played it for a few hours you know after we finished playing whatever we were playing that night um and then fixing the houses and stuff was pretty neat because it just you know you just kind of keep building stuff it's not as detailed as house flipper like there are like the scaffolding for example uh, when you put scaffolding up next to a building, the, there is only certain spots of the scaffolding, the, the particular scaffolding that you're putting down is. So like the corner only has the ladder and then like you can't just put the ladder anywhere. So it's like if you need to build something to get to the roof for a certain part, you're going to have to literally build like all of them around the building to get the part that you need. So it's uh, little things like that. But like I said, for 10 bucks, it wasn't bad. Demurin. Nice. Um, Have you been rising to the occasion? Well, just barely. Uh, um, <laughs> I've been uh, of bad jokes. I'm sorry today. for your significant other. <laughs> I've been uh, playing Monster Hunter Rise as of yesterday, which just got re-released on PC. It was originally released on the Switch, which I did play it on, so I've bought it twice. Um, mm-hmm. As some backstory. Uh, Monster Hunter World also got ported to PC after releasing on consoles. That went terribly. Um, its release was absolutely miserable. Uh, whereas Monster Hunter Rise has had a pretty good release on all. There are some save issues being reported, and then there's some people complaining that they haven't played Rise before. They played Monster Hunter World, and that Rise sucks in the sense that the port is bad because it's harder to control your character. And the controls are different. Um, just to clarify, since so many people have been saying stuff like that, uh, the controls are just different in general for Monster Hunter World. So, um, yeah, it's not a bad port. That's just you not learning the controls to figure it out. Um, get good, bitch. Yeah, well, not even yeah. get good. Just like look at your keybinds and and be like, oh, <laughs> I have to hit a different button to do that on this game. Oh, that's really weird. I would expect a different game to be exactly the same as the last one. That is a well, different I mean, game. I mean, Monster Hunter is an interesting genre because it's kind of halfway between like, there's some Dark Souls-esque portions of it where you have to understand the monsters tells and what they're doing and be able to react to them in a timely manner, especially since a lot of your weapons have wind up times or, you know, there's timing involved in this very much like a dark souls in ways. Mm -hmm. And in other ways, it's like an MMO where you have, friends with you that can join up and you you can throw down on this monster together. And I, I do love oh, the yeah, fact yeah. that I giggity giggity goo. But besides that, there's the fact that like, oh, I want to build this armor and to build this armor, I need this particular parts and I can only get these parts if I like try to chop off the tail of this monster. So there's certain attacks that you trying to prioritize in order to get the particular parts of the monster to progress yeah. your crafting. Yeah. But, but specifically between these two games, the reason why controls are different is because there's a lot of differences for monster hunter world to monster hunter rise. Um, in Monster Hunter World, one of the main things that's changed from the two of them is it was mounting in Monster Hunter World. You could jump on the back oh, of that's, uh, 
Well, um, and that wasn't even from the beginning. They put the mounting in. You know, you could you can jump on from the beginning. Through. No, you could jump on from the beginning. The difference is eventually they added the ability to actually control the monsters and smash them into the walls now, to that knock was them cool. over. That was cool too. Yes. What they changed about that now is they've taken that entire system another step farther. You can actually ride them and make them fight each other. So if two of them run into each other and one gets knocked over, you can jump on it, pick it up, like get up on it, and then use it to like beat up the other monster while you're riding on its back. So like you're actually controlling that monster. Has uh, they also had any issues with this game yet? Because that sounds kind of cruel. I mean, if they did, I mean, who, who cares? The, you think Monster Hunters are going to care about Peter? I mean, all Peter's going to do is gather them all up and euthanize them anyway, so. Yeah, that's Fuck true. Him. That's true. They also added that's mounts true. to the game. Um, so Come now you can it, actually bro. ride on your, uh, your pal your dog? and like, yeah, you can ride on your dog and your dog Which fights with like, you. Like, no, I heard not only can you ride wow. on your dog, but you can fucking drift on your dog. Like oh you yeah! Can, like drift around yeah. corners and shit. You can like wall run with your dog. The oh, dogs do a lot. There's there's a bunch of stuff that they've added. My um, dog, my dog, going to sleep with me. And that's yeah. all. The multiplayer has been toned down. My son tries down, to ride our dog. But um, day drinker, you need to up your dog game. You definitely need to up your no, dog game. No, no, I think we're your dog good. should be able to carry like a double bladed weapon in its mouth so that it can fight she, giant absolutely. monsters. Absolutely. I I think she would she would definitely fight giant monsters. There you um, go. That's all that matters, would, really. Like, and she's, then we she's just going to think the pommel... Now. She's, think, she's just going to think the pommel of a double-bladed weapon is a stick anyway, and she's going to grab it and bring it back to you anyway. So, I mean... She's the best. Yeah. There you go. She'll be like, I got this for you. I killed all yeah. these, and then I gave it to you. you the the port has been really good, though. The mechanics that they've added are great. I mean, obviously, I played with them on Switch, but the port is really stable. It looks better, runs better. Um, the online isn't bad, although not super intuitive as uh, myself and James's James sucks or James is great, depending on how you look at him. Yeah, um, or found out the day. Or whatever. what mood am I in? But um, it's it's interesting if you're in a monster hunter and you haven't taken the dive yet. Um, I would sincerely advise that you look into this one. Or don't. I don't care. <laughs> right. <laughs> <Maybe> <laughs> So going Loser. back in time, we've talked a lot about Outriders. And actually, I played the demo a little bit with Tamir. And it was amusing because he was I was like, oh my God, I can't like like seriously, there's no jump. I want to hit space, jump. There's no jump. And then we actually yeah, got we actually got to the cutscene. <laughs> there's legit a cutscene about how the your character jumps from one side of the thing to the other, which was hysterical irony to say the <laughs> least. Um, now that was way back in the beta. Then Demiran had his issues with Outriders after playing many, many hours. And literally, mm. if you oh, want to hear a little bit about this statement, it's an understatement. If you want to hear more about this, Go back to our last episode where this is kind of his, in some ways, his best and his worst game of the year. But <laughs> after listening to that oh, last would you episode, like to oh after this, sir? favorite game, right? After listening oh to this last okay, most, we're, we're, o- most you know, overall here's, game. Here's the deal. Most I'm going to come up game. with some amazing definitions for this time next year, Good. and you will not deviate. Right. Wait. Sounds but, great. Like listening that. to Demir and talk about it, I was like, you know, I mean, over overall, stealing a word from Zeissy there, Outriders sounded pretty cool until it had those technical difficulties. Mm-hmm. I was like, it's available on Xbox Game Pass for those that are subscribed to that. And I was like, okay, I'm going to check it out. On my PC. And I install it on my PC. And it won't launch. Because the uh-huh. easy anti-cheat, for whatever reason, that's part of it and part of other games, uh, especially some other Epic games. I think Fortnite also uses it. By the way, I can launch Fortnite just fine. Um, 
I can't launch it and I can't play Outriders. And then I went to my Xbox Series X, installed Outriders, and I can play it fine. But I'm on a controller for an FPS. And okay, give me 10 years ago when I played Halo on a controller. And yeah, I could do sniper shots fine on it. But for whatever reason, I can't do that anymore. And I really need the mouse and keyboard for an FPS. And I'm like, I want to play this on PC and I'm looking online and they're like, Oh, launch easy anti-cheat, you know, directly from the games folder and like have it install. Well, hell hello. If you have game pass, all of that is an encrypted area of your drive that you can't access. So you can't do that. And I'm fo- like, I'm following. Then there are other people who are like, oh, install the demo from Steam and then install anti cheat, the easy anti cheat from there. And I've tried 15 different ways and I can't get this to run on my PC. It's, so I don't want to say that's an Outriders issue. And the reason I say that, this is oh, not, not the first time I've had issues like this for other games that literally. Try to launch it; it will not load. Yes, and for eventually, me, it's Microsoft has Game to Pass. Issue. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't yeah. know what it is issue. with how Game Pass handles their EAC installations, but it yes, it's got some jank to it. So, so the so I agree with both of you. Uh, I do not believe it's an Outriders issue. I believe it is partially an Xbox Game Pass issue because of the whole weird thing they did where it's not quite an X64 executable. It's this weird, what do they call it? UAW or some weird thing. Have you tried to load it from the cloud, like play online, like stream it from the beta Xbox beta? I've not tried that yet. That's a good point. That'll probably work. Try that next. Um, so yeah, Even with Windows 11, Windows 11 is supposed to be in the future, this thing where we get away from this weird proprietary thing that Xbox Game Pass did for Windows 10 games or Windows 10 apps. And we're supposed to get back to more Windows native type apps. Um, But apparently that hasn't happened to all writers. Easy Cheat is also in the mix here i have problems with it because that's what's preventing it from loading granted i think it is in conjunction with the xbox but i have seen plenty of things online where it's not xbox game pass related that it is an easy cheat relation thing so i think there's a combination here um again works absolutely fine on my like console but not on my PC. So I'm going to keep plugging away at it because I want to be able to have that precision with the mouse. I'm I've lost my controller skills, I guess I've been like just with, with the mouse. I've just been pampered too much, I guess. So I'll keep going at that and try to report back as I find more information. I mean, just just hold out, and then you and I can play the expansion when it drops. There you go. Fair or enough. not. Fine. I mean, no, I mean, fair enough. You. No, I agree. I'm like, <laughs> hey, listen, when you and I played the beta, I had a blast. We have that yeah. video up somewhere. God knows. We'll do somewhere. it again. I'll, I'll, I'll drag you all the way to endgame with me. Yeah. Hey, so listen. One part to, to know I'll about be EAC. Uh, one part to know about the easy anti-cheat is that the steam deck for proton or the linux version of like the steam uh, application that's going to be running on the steam decks uh they're also having issues reported right. with easy acts um easy anti-cheat as well so it's not as easy as as it <laughs> says <hasn't> easy <laughs> um, but it's um it is something that they're working through as well because they're obviously seeing issues with it too. So I'm sure it's the same sort of concept with you know Microsoft having to try to deal with it along with you know Steam and whoever else. Uh, I mean the point is to say that you can't have hackers in a game. So it's really trying to lock down the files and the binaries to make sure that you know it's impossible to cheat at. So it's like 
I get it, but at the same time, like it's got to be able to run. Like if you're going to have it on different well, platforms. That, you know? And with you have outriders that has multiplayer, but is not multiplayer focused. I mean, this isn't Fortnite. This isn't Halo. This isn't like a multiplayer game, competitive game. Yeah, but they don't so want you to cheat. Why is the focus on this anti cheat? It just doesn't make sense. Well, can you trade in the game? <clears throat> yes. Demiron. Can you buy stuff in the game? <laughs> yes. Well, there you go. Fuck y'all. The anti cheat was stupid, and everybody agreed that it was stupid. Yeah. Um, and no, like, the reason it's there is they want to stop people from ruining other people's fun by going into their games and being like maxed out on stats and just like obliterating everything and whatever. Um, but it didn't work anyways. People ended up editing their save files. It was a whole thing. So they created like the cheater brand. So anybody who cheated got branded and wouldn't be able to play with other players. It was like a whole thing. But then their game deleted all of everybody's characters anyway, so it didn't matter if they yeah. did cheat. So, Rip. Yep. Rip. Outright. Another news nice yeah. Nintendo. Hmm? Well, another news, uh, if you're a fan of Goldeneye, back on Nintendo 64, uh, it's actually coming to Nintendo... No. It's actually coming to Xbox, <laughs> which what? is the craziest thing that I had ever read. I had to read this article a couple of times because I or the headline at least a couple of times. because I was like, obviously, I'm reading something wrong here. But yeah, so Xbox uh, or not. Sorry, Golden Ice uh, 007 <laughs> um, is actually getting a digital release on Xbox. Uh, so um, I don't know why War 64 posted on Twitter, uh, showed some different achievement picks from the game. Um, that he found. Uh, so that has those are on his page there, um, which is pretty neat, but it's pretty crazy. Now, apparently it's not a remastered version from what they can tell. Uh, it just looks like uh, it's going to be the original port just on Xbox, which is pretty strange. What's sick about this is that they actually semi officially had created a port for this for the Xbox 360. And wow, no, ago. like this leaked recently too. This is not directly related to what Zeissy was talking about. There's an official port that's coming out, yes, but there was a there was a canceled Golden Eye 007 port to the 360 that was in development, created, and then the talks between Microsoft and Nintendo kind of broke down, so they never released it. And it it's in, the reason why it was interesting is because just early ish in 2021, people found out about this, and someone leaked out the port, which was pretty playable apparently. So it's kind of cool that we have this 360 leak that came out. And now they're making the official like, ah, we're going to go ahead and release this anyway on the Xbox platform because like clearly people are interested in this and everyone wants to play short round and cheat to win because they're super small. Hot job. No, oh, hot. Okay, yeah. Sorry, short sure. round is from Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones. Dr. Jones, Dr. Jones. Uh, yeah, so that'll be fun. Can't wait to do some hours of uh, four-player Goldeneye. Or the paintball mode. That'd be fun. I'm no, down no, for it. I cannot wait for Day Drinker to play that. Yeah. I've been playing um, Lunch Lady. I've been playing Janitor. I've been playing... Wait, Lunch Lady the game? Monitor. Or you're saying, like, oh, these are real life things. I've been Got playing it. Gym Teacher. I've been playing Concierge. I've been playing nice. Cook. I've been playing Room Service. I've Listen, been playing a lot of things. If you're Concierge, of... I have so you're some things to send to you. <laughs> I know. 
It's like the Sims uh, yeah. she's talking about. Yeah, I, I, I jinxed myself um, when I was talking to... Uh, here, I, I, I have your phone number. I'm going to text you that I need my pillows to be fluffed. Listen, I, 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 I've not done the fluffing because of the Rona. Because oh, so, careful. so let me, let me, careful what you let me move there. on. Let yeah. me move on. Because this next and the last one we're going to talk about today, I was lulling out loud. So the game maker of Dying Light comes out on uh, not Twitter. guiding light, not guiding light, friends, <laughs> dying light. Go, um, and, so dying and to light, be clear, at dying light, dying game. light is a Zeissy ass Zeissy game. Mm. Uh, I, I, I played it. I just I don't know. It didn't didn't do it for me. But uh, so Dying Light Two, they they came out on Di- at Dying Light game on Twitter. Uh, and they posted in a little tweet that says, we wanted to clarify our recent communication about the amount of, oh, I'm sorry, let me back up. This is the second tweet. Um, so they came out <laughs> and tweeted and said that basically in this game, it's going to take you a uh, at least five hour, five, I'm sorry, 500 hours to fully complete the game. And we're like, okay. So then they came out and said, we wanted just to clarify that with a recent communication about the amount of hours required to complete the game. Dying Light 2 Stay Human is designed for players with more different gameplay styles and preferences to explore the world and how they see fit. Um, which is fine. A game maker says, hey, this is how long it's going to take. I mean, great, but like, whatever, because some people are just going to, you know, play whatever they play it anyway, and some are going to be better than others, like Demir. Uh So, that part was fun. But then, of course, like the way that the world is and the way that everything <laughs> happens to go. Um, so if you remember a game called Shadow Warrior, uh, it's a very like uh, bloody type game where you can like really just chop up a bunch of different enemies with like some like samurai swords and things. It's a pretty crazy game. Um, but they posted on Twitter and said, Shadow Warrior 3 will take 500 hours to complete 60 times. <laughs> in response to hey, listen, dying lights game what? i i so know then, uh, hold on hold on sorry go ahead i'll i'll come in afterwards so we'll say so then xbox retweets to their tweet and says so that's 60 times 500 times three shadow warriors which equals and you know eh, okay great right uh so then Turtle Would Beach you- tries to jump in on this. <laughs> and Turtle Beach says, replying to Shadow Warrior, we can make time for that. <laughs> and Rebirth Phoenix 9 uh, on Twitter responds to Turtle Beach and says, Turtle Beach, your parts don't last that long. <laughs> <laughs> and then somebody was- responds with like a meme of like, basically just getting roasted but it was it was I, a, a I, great I little comment on 500 hours of gameplay now i have put 500 ga- hours of gameplay into a game um, skyrim <laughs> no actually not uh i can look up skyrim so i can see why that only two so, for me daisy and uh rocket league like 500 hours is an insane amount of time like wow i've probably put 500 hours in Maybe Destiny 2. Um, Plants vs. Zombies is probably my number one game oh, ever yeah, for time that's... between mobile, tablet, oh and Steam. Oh my god. Now, Steam alone, Steam uh, alone only has 229 hours on Plants vs. Zombies. And I know that's low. Like that's lo- like it, if I haven't put in seven have seven hundred hours into Plants vs Zombies, I would be shocked. Yeah, because I've sat there and just played like over and over and over during plane game. flights. If I'm not so, like having my DS out and playing Mario Kart with people around me, mm-hmm. and no, like no lie, I've played Mario Kart on a plane and had people shush me. Because I was too loud about an exciting thing that happened in Mario Kart. So, but, for example, on my my Steam list, and this obviously doesn't incorporate any of the games on console, any of the games previous time to Steam. I know there was people may not believe that there was a time before Steam, um, <laughs> but on my Steam, I have Rocket League at a 
1,124 hours. Jeez. I've got DayZ at 733 hours. And then it drops to Civ 5, which I thought I played a lot of, 122 hours. <laughs> right. And everything under that is like under 100, essentially. So it's like 500 hours is a good chunk of change. Like that's that's a lot of time. Yeah, yeah. Playing a game for 500 hours is crazy. Right. <laughs> Who would do that for uh, multiple games? I would love Demiran. to hear it. Oh, I would Demiran, love what's, to hear it. Demiran, what's Come your, on. Let's what's do your, it. Uh, Let's do it. Uh, God damn it. What's the name of that game? Dungeon. <laughs> Off of no. Steam, I've only probably got two games that are above 500 hours, and I'm Path of Exile and Elder Scrolls Online Path of are probably both at a thousand hours at least. However, I had over 2,000 hours prior to moving to the Steam application. So I played about 3,000 hours of Path of Exile, 1,000 hours of Elder Scrolls, I don't even know, 4,000, 5,000 hours of World of Warcraft probably. And I would say pretty much every major MMORPG I've played. I've played at least 500 hours of two 2000 hours. So yeah. looking at your steam page, you're number one. <laughs> Should you're I go through this? One. You're one. <laughs> I mean, sure. Um, you've got ESO at a thousand fifty nine. Mm-hmm. You have path of exile at 916. Uh, but then yours actually is a lot higher on average for everything else. So fallout Four, two hundred ninety three 293 hours. New World, 291 hours, and so forth and so on. Everything's basically in the 200s. Like, I'm scrolling for a minute. Actually, let me say, oh yeah, okay. Hold on. It's a bit before <laughs> I get Spike, under. Counter Strike, 274. Still, Witcher, the 250. Like, Grand Theft Auto, 250. 500 uh-huh. hours for a single player game. Yeah. That's I mean, they a said big Skyrim ask. was like 60 hours or something. Like, That's when it came still out. still a like, big ask. Um, now, okay. So to be fair, that's, that's come us. There's some marketing spin here. They are likely <clears throat> talking about like every sub quest and every side thing that you can do. And also the big thing about, uh, the big thing about dying light two is the f- fact that you can make decisions <laughs> that make permanent changes to the map that can completely close off quest lines. You can decide to flood an area or not to flood an area, which can completely change what you can do as well. So, yeah. so yeah, the other I thing, mean, who knows if they're even talking about like replay throughs to like go well, and see the other stuff they couldn't see. That's the part that was in this picture that I forgot to mention is they have a screenshot. It tells it breaks it down a little better. It says 20 hours is the time you need to complete the main story, which is right. not bad. That's a pretty solid no, that's story, normal. Main story. That's 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 um, a normal good good story. Art. 80 hours is the time needed to finish the main quest and all the side quest. And then the 500 okay, hours enough. they speak of is the time needed to max out the game with all main and side quests, choices and endings, checking every place on the map, every dialogue and finding every collectible. Go so fuck you said, yourself. <clears throat> you have to play through it a like, times because check, check, you have to keep doing that. Like, check. And go fuck yourself. So what's interesting with that is on Steam, I just realized there's a page that says uh, it actually tells you perfect <laughs> games. Which Ugh. I thought was interesting. Ugh. Which are games that you've gotten all the achievements on? Is, uh, zero you know for me. That's zero. So mine, I have one, and I'm just curious to see how many Demir and Cats has. in time. <laughs> Probably none. No. Uh, actually, it won't tell me. So, what is this? What website is this? Not yet. It's on Steam. Steam. On Steam. Oh. Cats in uh, time. <laughs> so sort by, oh my god I'm so yeah have to, you have you have zero. i did i did play cats in time this week i, did, I have I did one, do that this week. one game that i apparently got my head i'm so glad i'm so glad that you did that <laughs> you were loud okay weird glad um, i'm so glad she said so glad. glad i clearly heard you she said her uh so i didn't say loud and say glad mm. what is my perfect game Perfect games. The Walking Dead season two. That was the only game I've ever made forty out of forty achievements. Jesus. So, oh, uh, how many well, achievements, achievements you, you have? have? Are super easy to cheat anyway. So, huh? Steam achievements are super easy to cheat anyway. No, I was asking mm. Demirian because he. Was oh, I said how many achievements do you have in total under your profile? Uh, how no, would I look that up? 
So I have another one. It's 47 or 48, you. and that's The Walking Dead. If you so just click on, game. go to your profile, it'll be the top thing. Top thing on my profile. Oh, 71 achievements total. Wow. Wait. No, that's that's Rocket League, though. That's just I'm for Rocket League, okay. That. Yeah, because that's under the thing. Uh, I see I badges, before. but that's something different. Weird, yeah. If I go to my name in Steam and I hit profile, it'll tell me my total amount of achievements. My average game completion rate on Steam is 19%. <laughs> Where do you see this I'm, at? I'm 18% for average game completion rate. 19%, but with 374 games. Where I do you have see? 930 achievements. Where, where is this? Where do you Under see your that? Under your profile. You Under go your to your, your name and uh-huh. then profile. Oh, oh. Okay, 13 where of 30 do you see these numbers again for the third time? Where right do you see this information? Uh, we just told you. You go to your name, you click on profile, and it's halfway down the screen. My man doesn't see it, man. He's a nobody. Ah, uh, uh, wow, that's kind of buried. Wait, no, because that's it's not buried at all. That's it's Rocket like League. No, that's Rocket name? League. That's Rocket League. Uh, so weird. So, your name. You're, you you say store. Library, uh, maybe it's just different for him. your name. I, I will literally share different. my screen after this, and you guys can his, see what his I'm layout's about, just different. That's I'm not talking about be. on the web, I'm talking about the Steam app. I'm on the app, and I'm yeah. on my page. Yeah, <laughs> Store, I, I'm sure that he's where he's supposed to be. It probably just is however his profile setup is different. His profile, I'm yeah. level 14 wow. at whatever the hell that means in Steam. Oh, well, anyway. So, well, what do we got for emails yeah. today? Nothing, because nobody likes us. So Aww. if you want to yeah. like us, send uh, us lots an of people email. like us. They just don't take the time to write. They just us don't have anything to email at us. Goa at Saskia. Maybe we should com. say they should TikTok us. Maybe that's like the new thing. Maybe emails like so last year. That's need, like, up to our social media us. manager. No, no, that's a TikTok. no, no, nobody TikToks you. Do you that's not right? a thing. Just, oh God, no. No, See, a, that's that's no. why social was, media manager has her head in her hands because you are people. It's Zycia like the VR, yeah. is Zycia and the shit out of all of this. So yeah, uh, send us an email goa at sasgaming.com. If you're interested in <sighs> checking out all of our links, meaning our socials and all that stuff, uh, go to sasgaming.com at our website. And then uh, if you want to hang out with Green. us and spend money on us because we're cute or something, uh, go to patreon.com slash sasgaming uh, where you can pick up a Patreon package and become, you know, sponsored awesome. and stuff i don't know we'll we'll put you in the credits and stuff but uh other than that that's what got our attention this week uh till next week this is it so take care again see ya see ya bye